As a part of our problem solving practice, uh, we will look into the lead code level easy problem related to array data structure, where we will try to understand the problem statement and reach to the solution with the step by step approach. So let's start. We will look into the lead code easy level problem called sum of all odd length subarrays. Uh, let's understand the problem in detail. So before that, what is subarray? Subarray is a contiguous part of an array and contained within the original array. And it has the same order of elements as the original array, right? So let's say we have given this input array. So we will uh, check some of the subarray examples within this, right? So one element also represents the subarray. It is a contiguous part of the array, right? And for whatever the examples, subarray examples we are seeing here, they represent the contiguous part of the array, like two, five, three. It is continuous, not like that. Four, five, three, not like that, right? And the order of elements is same as the original array. And the original array itself is a subarray, right? Because it is a contiguous part of the array. So let's understand the problem statement. We need to check all odd length subarrays and do the addition of elements in each subarray. And we need to do the total of each subarray and return that as output. Right? Odd length here means that number of element into that subarray should not be divisible by two. So let's say we have given this input array. So how many arrays, subarrays will be there for length one, five, each element, right? Uh, how many uh, subarrays with the length three, one, four, two, four, two, five, two, five, three. You can see their contiguous part of the array. The subarrays with the length five is the original array itself, right? which is also a subarray. Now we need to do sum of all elements in each subarray. Here only one element, so we just wrote a number. Here it is like one plus four plus two, seven, four plus two plus five, 11, and so on, right? And we need to return the total of all these green numbers, which is 58. That is a problem statement. Now one way is that we check all the odd length subarray and then do the addition of each uh, element in that subarray and then return the total of all subarrays addition. But that will be inefficient because if if there is an array with so many numbers like 100k or something like that, it is it will uh, it will be a slow process. Right? So how can we do this efficiently? If we observe one thing that if we find out that each number how many times or in how many subarrays it is coming. Right? For example, if the two number it is coming in one two, three, four, five subarrays. Number five is coming into one, two, three, four subarrays. If you find out that number of subarrays, we can do that element into the number of subarrays, uh, number of odd length subarrays, so that we'll get the sum, the value which is contributed by this element into the total sum, right? And we can find out that for each element and return the total. So how can we find it efficiently for each element? What is the pattern, right? Let's understand the pattern. So let's see uh, here. This is the input array and the red uh, numbers are the index of the array position. So if you see for the number two, right? There are two things. One is that there are a sub arrays which are starting with the two, two as a first element, right? The number of odd length sub arrays starting with number two as a first element. And there are number of odd length subarrays where number two is either present in middle or end. So this two we need to find out. Let's start with the first one. How will we find out the number of odd length subarray where the number two is a first? So if you observe right here, the number two to check all the subarrays where number two is a first, we can see that this is one subarray, this is one subarray, and this is one subarray where number two is starting as the first element. So we saw there are three subarrays. Now, if we observe that, it depends on to the number of elements are there on right, including two. Here, there are three elements. That's why we saw three total subarrays, right? If we see four, you will see four, four, two, four, two, five, four, two, five, three, four subarrays. So it depends on to the number of elements we have on to the right side, including that number. So we saw that the total number of subarrays starting with this particular element is three, but we need to get the odd length subarray. So we need to divide that 
by 2 right so how will we get that so number of odd length array is n by 2 plus n modular 2 n is the number of elements uh, from this current number to end of the array because uh, this n also represents the number of sub arrays starting with 2 right that's how we saw just now so we just do n divided by 2 and n modular 2 why modular because this is a odd length and we need to consider this one extra element also right so 3 by 2 plus 3 modular 2 is 1 plus 1 2 if you see we it is matching the number of odd length sub arrays starting with number 2 is 2 and the number of even length sub array is n divided by 2 equal to 3 by 2 1 here we are not checking modular because the extra element will only come when there is an odd length right so the it is 1 because 2 5 it is an even length the length is 2 so it is only one array here which is starting with the number 2 as a first element so this we found out that from one given starting with number one a specific number as a start how many sub arrays we will get uh, with, if with that starting number that formula we come to know let's say if we want to check from this number to right we need to check how many numbers are there on right side right and then divide by 2 uh, plus modular 2 to get odd length array number of odd length array and just divide by 2 for getting number of even length array right so we found this part right now this why we calculated the number of even length array uh, that we'll understand when we will try, try to compute this part also, right? So now we understood this part. Now let's understand the second part, where we need to uh, come up, uh, calculate the number of odd lengths of array where number two is in the middle or end. So we saw that the we already know that uh, how many odd length and even lengths of array with number two as a first element till the end. We calculated that and it depends on the number of elements uh, on to the right. If you want to start with 2 from left to right, right? We This is the value we got in the previous slide. Now, to, now what we need to check is, we need to check the odd and even length sub array starting from 2 to beginning of the array, excluding 2 because we already considered the 2 here by the computation, first part. So we need to check from here to here. Why we need to check from here to here? Because we are checking the sub array. Now, for 2 to be part of that sub array, we need to check the continuous array and it will be continuous if we check from this side, right? So now we need to apply the same formula which we applied to get the number of sub arrays starting with this number from till this end. We need to apply the same formula for getting the number of sub arrays starting with this number till the beginning, right? So, for example, for 4, there is one sub array, then 4, 1, that is one more sub array. So, two sub arrays. And you can see it is depending on to the number of elements. So, your number of elements is 2. So, the number of sub arrays is 2. But if we take the number of even sub arrays on this side, we need to check the number of odd sub arrays on this side because even plus odd will be odd, right? And we need to check the odd length sub array. So when we check the number of even sub array here, and then we check the number of odd sub array from uh, 2, excluding 2, to start, then one, if we multiply, then we'll see that 1 into 1, 1. Right, because odd length sub array is one here only, which is four, and the number of even sub array is two five. Why did we check that? For this, right? To find out whether two is a part of in middle or not, it is one possibility is that there is one array where even length sub array where two is starting, and there is some odd length sub array, right? If we add odd plus even, it will be even number, right? And the similarly, we, when we check for the odd here. We need to check the number of even sub arrays on this side, right? So that we get one because four one uh, it is a one sub array of even length two, and the number of odd sub arrays start with two to end. We already have this value here from the previous slide, so which is two, right? Why we check this? This if you see here two, right? Here if I see the two sub array, this is a odd length sub array. 
one element. But here it is an even length, one, four, two elements. Similarly, here two, five, three is a odd length subarray. But here we, we are checking for E1. Now E1, 2 plus odd 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, which is odd, right? So that is how we'll come to know all the odd length subarrays where number 2 is in a middle or an end, right? Now then we need to basically take the sum of it, like number of odd subarray from 2 to end, which we computed in previous slide starting with 2 and the number of odd subarray where 2 is in middle or end which we just now calculated right which is 1 plus 2 3 so this is 2 and this is 3 which is 2 plus 3 is 5 and we saw for 2 was coming into the 5 subarrays the 2 element was coming into the 5 subarrays so we can just do 2 into 5 to get the value which is contributing to the original, uh, the total sum because of the element 2, right? So, this is the concept, this is the pattern we understood and we'll apply this on to the, our solution. So, let's understand the solution here. So, we say number of odd arrays starting from current number to end, number of even arrays starting from current number to end. So, for each element, which is at the i, we check that is the formula we came up with, right? n is the number of elements, right? n is the number of, uh, n is the total number of elements in array. So, how many elements are there on the right side? Because we are checking for the, for this current number as a starting point. So, that is n divided by 2, like uh, this is the number of elements on right side divided by 2 plus n minus i modular 2 this is because we are checking for odd and uh, we need to consider that current element also, right? And for even array, we just need to do, do divide by two. Right? This, this is the same formula which we understood on uh, uh, that explanation, right? Now for odd length subarrays, where current number is the first element, the starting element. So we just check the odd arrays, right? Starting with the number and multiply that with the current number. Add it into the total sum. Now for the odd length subarrays where the current number is either coming in middle or end. When we check the number of even arrays from current number, we need to check the odd arrays previously, like uh, the on the left side, right? i divided by 2 plus i percentage by 2. i basically the number of elements on the left side, excluding 2, right? And then multiply with the current number. Plus, we also need to check the odd Arrays, uh, the number of odd array sub uh, odd arrays for the current number plus uh, into the number of E1 array on the left side. So that we'll come to know uh, the sub arrays where 2 is middle and the left side is E1 and the right side is a odd where 2 is starting, right? So that part also we are including, which we discuss uh, here, right? This part. So that we'll come to know, we'll cover both the cases. And then we return the total sum. Now, let's submit the problem. So you can see that all the test cases pass it. Uh, and here, if we see what is the time complexity, we are just iterating over the array once. So uh, the time complexity will be depending on the number of elements in the array, which is O of n. And it is very optimized solution compared to checking each sub array and uh, getting the sum for each sub array and then doing a total. So hope you understood the explanation and solution. Uh, if you like the video, please share and subscribe. Thank you. Hope you understood the step-by-step -step approach and how we reached to the solution. Uh, this will definitely help you to think in the right direction and improve your thought process. If you like the video, please share and subscribe. Thank you so much.